most data regarding unemployment in the United States is collected and reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The BLS divides unemployment into six categories, known as U1 through U6, but these categories don't line up directly with the way that economists categorize unemployment. U1 through U6 are defined as follows. We can think of U1 as a measure that specifically looks at long-term unemployment, because U1 specifically represents the percent of the labor force unemployed 15 weeks or longer. So mathematically, we can think about this as the number of people who have been unemployed for at least 15 weeks divided by the number of people in the labor force times 100%. We can think of U2 as a measure of gross job loss. Since U2 specifically counts those people who either lost their jobs or completed temporary work and now have to seek other employment. Mathematically, we can say that this is just the percent of the labor force who lost jobs or completed temp work, or the number of people who lost their jobs plus the number of people who completed temporary work divided by the number of people in the labor force times 100%. U3 is the specific measure of unemployment that economists refer to when talking about the unemployment rate. And you'll see that this is consistent with the definition that we talked about earlier. And we're saying that U3 is just the percentage of the labor force who are without jobs and have looked for work in the last four weeks. So if the people that are without jobs and have looked for work in the last four weeks are those people that we counted as unemployed, then this unemployment rate is just the number of unemployed people divided by the number of people in the labor force times 100%. We said before that the traditional measure of the unemployment rate tends to underestimate the true rate of unemployment. And we said that one of the reasons for that was that the unemployment rate doesn't count discouraged workers as being in the labor force. So we have a measure here, U4, that actually corrects for that. Notice now that we're changing the denominator of our percentage to not only include those people in the labor force, meaning those people who are either working or have actively looked for work in the last four weeks, but now we're also adding into that pool the discouraged workers who have gotten frustrated and as a result have not looked for a job. So we can say that the numerator is all those people that are either unemployed or discouraged and then the denominator is this total pool of labor force plus discouraged workers, again, times 100%. So this gives us a measure of unemployment that actually takes into account those discouraged workers. As it turns out, discouraged workers are actually part of a larger subset of people known as marginally attached workers. Marginally attached workers, again, are people who are not working and have not been actively seeking work in the last four weeks, and thus are not counted in the traditional definition of the labor force. But they are workers who, for whatever reason, would take a job if it came along, and that have, in fact, looked for work either since their last job or within the last 12 months. The difference between marginally attached workers and discouraged workers is that for marginally attached workers, we don't know specifically why they stop looking for work, whereas with discouraged workers, we can say specifically that they are not looking for work because they got frustrated. So because the discouraged workers are a subset of the marginally attached workers, we can think of this U5 measure, again, as a broader measure of unemployment or some sort of superset of U4 here. And we can see now as our denominator or as our pool of people, we're counting those people that are traditionally in the labor force. And we're also, con we're also counting those people who are counted as being marginally attached workers. And then those people we're counting in the numerator of our unemployment rate are either those people that fit the traditional definition of unemployment or those workers who are counted as marginally attached. And again, we have to take this ratio and multiply it by 100% to get a percentage. Last but not least, we have U6, which can be thought of as our broadest measure of unemployment, 
because it's looking at not only people who are typically unemployed, but also marginally attached workers as we did in U5, and now also looking at those workers that are involuntarily part-time rather than full-time, meaning they would like to work full-time, but they can't get a full-time job and are settling for a part-time job. Notice here that those people that are involuntarily part-time are traditionally counted, you know, for purposes of U3, as being employed, and thus they actually count in our traditional definition of the labor force. So we don't need to add them in again. And we can see that our total relevant pool of people in this case are the people that are traditionally thought of as in the labor force and the marginally attached workers. But now, as a measure of unemployment, we're taking those people who are traditionally thought of as unemployed, adding in the marginally attached workers, and adding in those who are underemployed in the sense that they're working part-time against their will, taking that ratio and multiplying by 100%.